I'm so glad to have him out here in this scheme with me. First Coast Sports Analyst, James Coleman. James, so good to see you tonight, baby. That's good to see you here in Texas. No doubt about it. Let's talk about the Texans. Let's start with that quarterback, C.J. Stroud. Uh, James, he is as good as advertised. Oh, he's extremely good. I mean, he's coming in. You think he'd have a sophomore slump. Obviously, last week, he didn't play as well. But right now, he went right back to where he was where he ended last season. You know, extending plays, being able to hit us across the middle, all kinds of different um, throws and throwing angles. He's just exciting to watch. His footwork in the pocket is amazing. It almost makes you jealous because it's what we thought we would have here at Jackson. And the crazy part about it, James, is, is staying on CJ Stroud for a second. There were so many opportunities where we could have had him, and he just found a way to elude defenders. In particular, on that last drive where they scored, um, he had two opportunities to get sacked. Um, he was able to extend those plays, and then once he did that, he made you miss. And even then, you know, he was throwing on rhythm. He found that guy, Nico, numerous times. I'm like, man, you know what? You might want to get a guy or two on that guy right there. Nico, <laughs> like he, found, he found his favorite receiver in rhythm, didn't overthrow him too much, never got panicked, and that's kind of what you would expect from your fifth-year player as opposed to your second-year player. All right, let's talk about our Jackson the Jaguars. They ran the ball better today. Take big. We had 90 yards on the ground. But let's go back to this particular play. Third quarter coming to an end, 58-yard pickup. He's out on the Texans' four-yard line. Jaguars have four opportunities to get it in, and we run a QB sneak on fourth down, didn't get it. Your thoughts on the play call? Man, if I see another quarterback power, <laughs> on goal line, stop getting the shotgun. Let's, let's, let's stop doing all this, this, this sexy stuff. Let's get nasty, man. Get a fullback, get an eye formation, get up under that center. If you're gonna, if you want to run the ball with a quarterback like Trevor Lawrence, do QB sneak. Um, one and a half yards. He's long enough. He's big enough. You've got a good enough interior offensive line to be able to do it. But really, the biggest thing here, and, and, and playing running back, coaching running backs, having seen running backs, when you break a long run, common sense says. Let me spell you for a little bit. Let's not run the ball two times back to back with you. I will not put Trev put the blame on Trevor for not scoring that touchdown. That directly goes to coaches. You, coaches have to protect the player. There were so many things that could have been done better on that, and you needed those points. And you needed any points. Three points would have been better than zero. But if you're going to be that aggressive, be smart. And that's just something that you would expect from a Super Bowl winning head coach, but just haven't gotten that out of him yet. Speaking of being aggressive, I felt like Trevor Lawrence did a better job of getting the ball in his main guy's hand as far as Christian Kirk and Brian Thomas Jr. today. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. is amazing. I mean, he's been playing, he showed you flashes. He's that guy that can take the top off of the defense. A couple of times he overthrew him again, but he still went right back to it. I mean, they targeted him a, a good amount of times. If they could get that under control, you're going to see um, a great one-two punch. One of the things that I tweeted out, it's like they're going to be better than coffee and beignets. If you know what Brian's from, <laughs> you would understand that reference. But Christian Kirk also, I've called him the best um, number two wide receiver in the league for quite some time. We brought him over here to be something that he wasn't. But in the role of number two, he is he is phenomenal. He can, he can move the chains. They just got to get it together. Like if they get that timing right, it gives you something to be excited for. Excited for, but at the same time, it's kind of like, eh, I need it to happen already. All right, let's wrap up with this. Trevor Lawrence, if you're going to be an elite quarterback in the NFL, you have to come through in the clutch. He has not. Why? Um, it's because I think he's thinking too much. When you saw him moving, moving the ball early, getting the ball out of his hands quick, uh, things of that nature, when he has to think, that's when he's done bad things. That's when the ball sails. That's when he holds on to it too long. And that's when he can't, he just doesn't have that magic that we've seen the other four quarterbacks that we went up against do. You see them extend the plays, and they make you pay when they extend the plays. And Trevor Lawrence has not figured that out. That's kind of disheartening. He can still find it. Hopefully they get that mojo in October, September. Eh, not so much. Let me tell you what I figured out. I love with James Coleman. It, when I'm on the road, it's live with me in person. Brother, I love you. Appreciate you, my friend. Big game James in the house tonight, live again.